Hey everyone, and welcome to this video where I'll be showing you how to make a ChatGPT style AI chatbot clone with Noodle and EnitN. And just Noodle and EnitN, no backend for this example. So I'm trying to keep it really simple. I want to just show a very basic foundation of what you can do with Noodle and um, with EnitN to create your own chatbot um, clone that then you can add on to and build upon for your own project. Uh, so just the, the, the foundational concepts. Um, so for this example that I'm doing, I'm using a fully self-hosted example using um, Olama and Llama 3.2. So Llama 3.2 is a new model released from Meta that's only, it, I think it came out a few weeks ago at the time of making this video. And it's pretty easy to install. Like I've tried running language models on my computer before and it's always been quite resource intensive and I have like a I don't want to say crappy but I have a 16 gigabyte MacBook Air it's not like a supercomputer so um, I always had trouble running language models before um, Llama 3.2 it's it's two gigabytes and it seems to have the conversational capacity of GPT-3 I would say which, you know, and I'm being conservative. I really think it's a very impressive language model. So you, you follow the guide anyway. I'll put the links in the video description. Follow the guide, um, get it installed, uh, Olama, get it running on your computer. So I've got mine running and type in Olama run Llama 3.2. Now, I don't know if you have to normally specify if you're doing the 1 billion or 3 billion model. I, am, I don't know which one I have got actually. So, but whichever one I've got, it works pretty well. So the first time you do this, it's going to download that two gigabyte um, file for the language model. But then once it's downloaded, it's just going to run um, a little chat window so you can verify that it's actually, actually working. Are you working? So there you go. Um, so it is working. You can close that down. It's all fine. And uh, we can move over to N8N. So I would recommend setting up N8N with Docker. That's how I normally have it running. Um, if you are already planning on putting this in the cloud project, then you can obviously run NADM either with some sort of Docker cloud version, um, like a container manager from AWS or Google or whatever, or you can run it with the NPM version. If you're running your own Linux server, you can install NADM through uh, Node and run install it through NPM and run it through Node, and that works just as well. So what we're going to be looking at with NADM is their new node section which is advanced ai and i'll put a bunch of links in the video description for that too um advanced ai in for them is it goes from the most basic which is what we're looking at today to incredibly complicated like ai tools that can access wikipedia or can do calculations or can do http api requests to get information that they need or they can even call other nn workflows in the same canvas and use the data from the workflow in the response to the user. So you could have a workflow that takes a uploaded Excel file, parses it out, does some sort of transformation on it, and then uses that as data for the response that the AI is gonna give, that it will inform the AI, and the AI will give a response based on that. So it really, this whole end it end thing for me has opened up a huge realm of possibilities of what we could actually use this for um especially because it's now with you know it's possible to run very well with olama self-hosted so it's not like oh yeah i would really love to do this project but i don't want to pay you know 30 bucks a month to um to open ai to be able to test it uh you really can get by and get quite far just with a self-hosted olama taking up two gigabytes of memory uh, it's so far when I look at my Mac, it's taking up two gigabytes of RAM. So, you know, okay, yes, if you have a lot of users, then you have to think about scaling and like, it's not just going to be two gigabytes, but, um, you know, just, just for to get started, this is like huge potential, I think. Anyway, um, to get started with this, you need to add a chat node, uh, tra chat trigger. And by default, it's going to be not publicly accessible. By default, it's just going to be one that you can run in here in the chat window, or you can get uh, like an embed link from NNN and um, run the um, chatbot in 
an embedded div on your own website, like a pop-up or something like that. So it, it actually gives you this like chat window where you can run tests and say, you know, um, but anyway, I'm not going to run it right now, but um, you would see the chat in this window and you would see the output and how it came to that conclusion and all the information that you normally get from debugging and it in. Um, so very, very cool. What we're doing here is we're making it publicly available and we're making it embedded chat. That means that I can um, call it via webhook. So I actually get a webhook address then that I can call. You don't get live words, word by word kind of responses, but you get um, one response at a time. So if it's a short response, it'll come through really quickly. If it's a longer response, it takes longer. So it's not, not super cool, but maybe that's one of those things that they'll work on in the future, I'm not sure. And I'm gonna respond using the respond to webhook node because I want to tailor my response as I always do. Um, then we put in the AI agent, tools agent. Um, from the different types of agent, I haven't tested them yet. I've selected tools agent, it seems to work really well. Um, it's gonna take its prompt from the chat node. Um, I can specify a specific format of output. So I get an output parser where I can add um, what kind of output I want um, the agent to give. And so that'll you know force it to give a JSON output, for example, so that I can use that JSON in my app um, and not have to parse through the conversational answer that it gave me, but we're not gonna do that today. And we can also give it a system message and you know program how many iterations are gonna be, et cetera. But the system message is probably what's gonna interest most people where you can tell it how you want it to speak. So if this is a customer service agent or some sort of sales bot proposing, you know, offering products to customers who are visiting your website, then you could tell it to be particularly polite or formal or informal or um, to have some, you know, important information that you want it to have before rep replying to the customer. Um, today I'm testing it as uh, making it give answers like Homer Simpson, because why not? So you need to connect it up at least to a chat model. And here we're using the Olama chat model. The important thing about that is um, setting up your credentials. If you're running like I'm running, which is um, a Docker NN trying to access Llama running on localhost, the only thing that worked for me was doing the Docker host dot internal call, which looks for the the host machine's localhost. So I had to replace localhost with this host dot Docker dot internal one one four three four, which is the port that uh, Olama runs on, and that worked. And that gave me then the model which I'm running, which is 3.2. You can have all sorts of fun with checking out temperatures and top K and top P and all that kind of stuff to see how that um, affects the answer. Uh, all the, the lovely AI stuff we know and love because uh, certainly when I do anything with it, it just completely messes everything up. So I just leave it with no options, just pure Olama. We need to give it a memory. So the easiest is to give it the window memory buffer. It just gives it a temporary um, memory inside in it. And um, if you want to go further with memory, what I would recommend doing is looking up, um, where is it? Uh, Zep. Zep is something I'm going to be experimenting with because it's a memory that allows you to attribute conversation session IDs to a particular user. So Zep will keep a memory of which user has had which conversation. So not only can it retrieve the session to let you continue the conversation in the future. So you can have one of those menus with like, whether, you know, here's the chat conversation I had yesterday, I can continue that one, but it actually can make inferences based on that user's preferences. So it can, it can augment the information being given to the AI with this user used to have this particular habit and they've changed habits recently. They explained in a previous conversation, they changed habits. So it can take those things into consideration when giving its answer. Um, and that is insane. So I'm really looking forward to experimenting with that. Um, or like we said, there are tools as well that you can add to it. Um, so we're just gonna do the very basic, just have a chat, basic model, get a response, nothing fancy and see what we can do with that. Now I'm not gonna show you the chat in here. I'm going to show you the chat in Noodle. So just to quickly present what this is doing, it is a very simple uh, chat container with a repeater. It's got a little loading animation that comes up when um, the button is pushed and, um, and it and is thinking about its answer. And it's got a chat bar at the bottom. Um, the answers themselves are just a markdown, which is a module you can install from the Noodle um, modules menu. And um, 
text that just shows the timestamp and the timestamp is uh, I, I generate every time a message is created a timestamp and it's converted into um, something like one minute ago, two hours ago, yesterday, something like that. And that's it. And then we have a little, a little markdown, um, simple markdown CSS. Now I could have written this myself, but this is markdown CSS that was actually written by the Olama chatbot. When I was in the middle of building the app, I actually asked it the question inside the app. Um, could you just give me a quick CSS that would style a markdown class for Roboto um, font family and um, size 16? And it just immediately answered the question and I copied and pasted it directly into the app. It's a very surreal experience having the app you're building tell you the answer for how to build the app better. I, I, yeah, anyway, my, my brain is broken. So uh, we're going to try clicking on the button, see what happens. At the moment, I'm doing it fully front end, there's no back end. This is just one shot, you load this up, you have one conversation with the AI, you leave and your conversation starts anew and nothing is saved. So um, this is 100% front end, just creating objects, inserting it into an array called conversation, which is feeding the repeater. Um, and also, so then calling any then to get the output answer from the chatbot, creating an object, again, adding it to the array with the same, but um, stamped as assistant as the actor so i know which message i should put at the left side and which message at the right side um, and also putting in that uh, today's date every time the timestamp into the object um, and then the final thing that happens is it takes the height it waits till the chat group grows takes the new height it waits like 500 milliseconds takes the new height and then scrolls to the bottom so that you can see the the bottom of the message chain. So let's see how it works. And we can take a look at the, was the any then data here. Uh, maybe the AI object would be interesting to see. That's interesting to see. And that's probably interesting to see. So, uh, hey there, who are you? Do you see the little loader came up there? Like, I mean, the, the ability for it to actually make like jokes, not just give an answer. That's why I'm saying this is like GPT-3 level, in my opinion, like this is impressive level of, um, of uh, that, that a bit of a big gap there with that. Sorry, just that annoys, that's annoyed me. Oh yeah, okay. Because the markdown already has a gap, that's why. Okay, sorry, that's better. So yeah, it's, I mean, I just, Anyway, I'll sh let's have a look at something else. So can you give me a JavaScript expression that will merge two arrays, please? I was thinking a bit longer. JavaScript array is right. All right, here's the deal. <laughs> You want to merge two two arrays like they're donuts at Lard Lad Donuts? <laughs> what the hell am I looking at? Like I like am I crazy or is this actually a really quite clever AI for a two gigabyte RAM, two gigabyte data model? Like I just it's hard to believe. It really is hard to believe. Uh, yeah, I know you're hungry. Um, what's the best? beer in the world in your opinion well, I think we all know what it's gonna be see how it scrolls every time when we're doing the when we get to the bottom it does that scrolling which I like come on homie duff beer of course Jeez. duff light yeah obviously yeah. don't tell Marge I think I'm gonna kiss Anyway, we could go on and on and on, but uh, that's that's it. I mean, that's you've got it uh, right in front of you. Uh, a, a proper, for me, a GPT-3, possibly even but a little bit more intelligent uh, model running fully locally, fully open source, local hosted solution um, to make your own chatbot, which, and this is just scratching the surface. This is like the least powerful version of what we can do with this. If you start using vector stores, and that's another thing we're gonna. I'm gonna look at using vector stores, to um, using a vector store like uh, I was using Quadrant Quadrant uh, a while ago, or like Superbase also. I mean, this you can feed it any documents um, to vectorize documents, and they'll use those documents to give its answers. So say this is a customer support tool. 
then you feed it all the technical documentation of your app or whatever it is that the customer support is for all the sales documentation and contractual details of your company and then it'll use that data when it's um, being asked a question about a document about you know some sort of sales um um, obligation or whatever something that's in the contract it, it will go and find the contract and find the information you're looking for to be able to give that with the answer so you can have your own instead of training your own basically where we are is instead of training your own ai which is incredibly difficult um, and incredibly resource intensive you can now use vectors as a cheat to use a very simple model like olama and a you know reasonably large vector store but like it's not vector stores are, are designed to be um, uh, queried very quickly uh, to cheat the system and be able to have uh, an AI that has full access to all of your um, specific documentation without having to include that in the context window and that's the big deal is I don't have to put the whole contract from my company for every sale that's possible all the sales conditions into the instructions which takes up tokens and, and context um, uh, from the model which means that it's not able to give us as good a response especially with a simple model like olama it'll go and find the relevant data in a huge database of all of the contractual conditions and use just those chunks that it finds as the data that it, as its context as its instructions to give the answer so it it it's really going to change the game and that's something I'm going to do videos about. So I'll be doing videos about ZEP and memory, but also about vectors and creating something like a, a customer support engine or something like that. But I hope you found that enlightening and exciting as much as I do. I'm absolutely on the edge of my seat about this. I think it's super powerful. I really hope you get out and start building your own stuff. And I would love to hear about it in the comments if you do. So please drop me a line and tell me what you've built and how this has changed your life for <laughs> forever. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that and see you in the next video.